obedience and that is our heart's desire to walk in obedience but so many times we are caught up in other things we're caught up in the opinions of others we're caught up in religion we are caught up in our fears and our anxieties and our uncertainties and so then we can't fully operate the way that god wants us to operate we can't move on to what god wants us to be because we're so busy trying to be what everybody else wants us to be and trying to please everyone else amen so tonight i want to talk about principles of obedience and i've come up with a list of about 12 that the Lord has shared with me. The first being that obedience reveals a level of love and trust. So obedience is one of the strongest indicators of love. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 15, if ye love me, keep my commandments. He didn't say some commandments. He didn't say the easiest commandments, but all commandments of the Lord. The reason why we walk in sin is because we have an in, not entirely embraced the word of God. Think about it. If we truly embrace the word of God, we would do what it says every single time. We wouldn't doubt what's going on because we would fully embrace it. We wouldn't second guess what God says. Evidence of our trust in God is our obedience or the lack thereof. But the reason we can't totally, with full abandon, trust God is because we don't trust ourselves always. I know personally, I have felt that I have let myself down time and time again. And I have made some choices that I'm not so proud of. But Romans 6 and 16 through 19, but I'll probably just read 6 to 16, says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked, hallelujah, that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. The Lord doesn't want us having to come back over and over again and repenting for things that are clearly spelled out in his word. He would much rather that we walk in righteousness, that we would walk um, being in right standing with him, being obedient to his word, being sanctified and obedient to his commandments. Next, obedience sets us up for blessings and favor, Psalms 112 and 1. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandment. We are blessed and we are favored when we have a reverential fear of the Lord and we walk in obedience to his commandments. The psalmist also said in Psalms 119 and 60, I hasten and do not delay to keep your commandments. Why would he say that? because he recognized that there are blessings that are attached to our level of obedience. And because he had a reverential fear of the Lord, amen? And because he had a reverential fear of the Lord, he had a great desire to please God and to do what was pleasing in his sight. Deuteronomy 11, 26 to 28. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and a curse if ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known. My question to all of us on this line tonight is, do you want to be blessed or do you want to be cursed? If you choose to be blessed, then you choose obedience over disobedience. I remember singing a song in church once that says, do what the Lord say do, do what the Lord say do. If you want to go to heaven, you must do right. Do what the Lord say do. So we can't get into heaven half-stepping. We must make our calling and election sure by doing his will. There should be no uncertainty as to where we're going because we know we're abiding in his word and we're obedient to his word. This is how we prove that we are his. John 14, 24 says, He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. Obedience to God means we must hear, 
we must trust, we must submit and surrender to his word. James 1, 22 to 25. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. In other words, we will not be, su be successful in the things of God if we don't first hear and then do it. If we think hearing without doing and making application of the word is enough, we are only fooling or deceiving ourselves. It is not enough to leave church or to leave Bible study or to leave a prayer meeting or to leave fellowship saying that that was an awesome word. That was a great word if we are unable to remember what that word was and if we are unable and unprepared to perform that word and put it into action. It's neither here nor there. It's empty words. We become sounding brass, right? So if we are, so obedience requires action. The Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When we hear the word of God, it should stir our faith to action. Jesus said that the sheep hear his voice and the voice of another they will not hear. And they will not follow. As in the natural, so in the spiritual. Sheep only respond to a voice and a word they know. So in order for us to know his voice above any other, we need to train our ears to hear his voice. We need to digest the word so we know how he speaks. What would he say? How would he say it? That way we will reject anything that does not sound like our shepherd. If someone tries to herd sheep with words they don't understand, they run away in fear. They don't follow. Next, obedience stabilizes you. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, so says James 1 and 8. A double-minded person always has some confusion go going on. His or her mind is not at rest. Always, there's always a problem when there's time to make a decision because there's inner conflict. 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Sometimes miracles are hindered from occurring in our lives because we refuse we refuse to crucify the flesh and walk in obedience. We have to digest the word of God and walk it out so that we are stabilized and not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. We must determine to obey his word no matter what. When we walk in obedience to God's word, that's the point when we truly come into alignment with what his will is for our lives. That's the point when we can truly say that we have crucified the flesh with all its desires. You see, when we walk in obedience, we actually come into agreement with God's will for our lives. And God can then superimpose his will and his desires over any fleshly will and desires we may have. Then and only then can we say his agenda is our agenda and his will is our will. Praise God. Number four, obedience requires faith. Abraham loved God, so he followed his instructions to sacrifice his son. He believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. He obeyed God to go into a land that he did not know. Obedience requires that we leave the old behind and we step into the new, because when we turn our life over to Christ, we become new creatures in Christ. This level of obedience requires full surrender. Surrender. Obeying God means that we have to leave all patterns of 
thought and spiritual operations that are not of God as we press into the things of the Lord. He gives us a word just for us and we want to take the lots along with us because we love them and we want all to be with, with, well with them. But obedience sometimes requires that there is a separation of the old from the new. We have to just drop some things off sometimes. We have to drop some people off sometimes. Number five, obedience will lead you into destiny and purpose. From the book of Esther, Esther didn't know that she was, was destined to save a nation, but her obedience catapulted her into destiny. Your obedience will bring about a perpetual blessing. It will fall upon your children and your children's children. There are times when God gives a word that is designed to catapult us into our future, but we miss it because we are too afraid to move on. We don't know what to expect. And sometimes out of curiosity, sometimes out of fear, Sometimes out of familiarity, we hold on to the past because as bad as our current circumstances may be, we want to look back. We want to hold on to it. We want to hold on to the past. And in so doing, we become captives to our past, unable to move on to the new and greater opportunities God has awaiting for us. Many of us have things that have been prophesied over our lives. And every day we're praying saying, God, when, God, when, God, when, but very often we have to do self-examination. It is time to look on the inside and God is say, God, is there any area of my life that I have not surrendered to you yet? God, is there any area of my life that I am not walking in obedience to your word yet? Lord, reveal it to me. Lord, show it to me, God, that I may put it to the side, that I may walk in your will and in in your way. Hallelujah. 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 So we can't move on. I want you to remember Lot's wife. The angel told Lot and his family to flee the city for their lives and not to look back. Lot's wife looked back and became a pillar of salt. Because of her disobedience, she was entrapped right in that place. When we disobey God, the enemy is waiting. He wants to entrap us. He wants to keep us grounded where we are. He doesn't want us to move on in God. Uh, hallelujah. There are consequences uh, when we don't follow the word of God. Why? Because God has set rules in place uh, that they are to protect us. Hallelujah. Number six, uh, no matter how many words of prophecy we get, uh, nothing will begin to happen until we begin to walk in obedience. Uh, recall in Joshua chapter six, and seven, Joshua, they went in and they conquered Jericho. The priests marched around the wall and the walls came down. The instructions from the Lord were, you are not to take anything out of the accursed city. The city is accursed. You're not to bring anything into the camp. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They went on. In chapter 7, they went into the city of Ai. This was a place that they knew they could overcome. But my God, they went in and they were defeated. They were put to shame. Some were killed and the others were ran out of the city. They had to flee back to the camp. And when they got there, Joshua fell on his knees. He said, Lord, this should have been our, our victory. Why not, God? Why is this not our victory, God? Show us, Lord, why we didn't come, come through. And God said, because my instructions were not followed, somebody brought something out of Jericho into the camp and it accursed the camp. There's sin in the camp, Joshua. There's disobedience in the camp, Joshua, and nothing's gonna happen until you go back and you get it right. So Joshua told everybody, you gotta go and you gotta consecrate yourselves. And I'm going to call each and every tribe forward, hallelujah. 
and we're going to find out where this stuff is. And they called the tribes forward, tribe by tribe. They threw lots, uh, hallelujah, until they brought it right down to the tribe of Judah. Uh, and in the tribe of Judah was a man named Achan. And Achan was the one that sold the stuff. Uh, Joshua said, confess now, Achan. And Achan confessed to it. He said, it's in the tent. Uh, Joshua said, we have to get it now. Uh, they went into the tent. Uh, they found everything. Uh, they took Achan and his family, his ox, his sheep, and everything that he owned. Uh, they stoned them and they burned them. Uh, Achan thought, surely uh, we cannot go into this land and conquer and come out with nothing. Uh, these things are valuable. They are treasures. Uh, we're going to take something. Nobody's going to miss it nobody will know but i tell you man may not know we may think we're hiding from our brothers and our sisters but the almighty god knows and the consequences are great hallelujah Hallelujah. So whenever God releases a word, if we are disobedient, we must first return to the last place of obedience before we can move on in the things of God. We have to figure out what was that act of obedience, of disobedience that caused the tides to change. We have to repent and then respond in obedience to what God is requiring of us. Next, disobedience is a byproduct of unbelief. It is easy and almost certain that we will be disobedient if we don't believe. When we have a firm belief in the divine promises of God, we will do what he says. Obedience will not be a problem. We need to make it a part of our daily prayer to ask the Lord, God, help our unbelief. Lord, help my unbelief. Touch my mind. Give me clarity of, clarity of thought. Touch my heart. God, that I may receive your word. I would keep it hid in my heart. God, that I would meditate upon it. Joshua 14, 79 says, I was 40 years old. This is Canaan talking. When Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to scout the land of Canaan, and I brought a report back to him as it was in my heart. My brothers who went up with me made the heart of the people melt with fear, but I followed the Lord my God completely. So Moses swore an oath to me on that day, saying, be assured that the land on which your foot has walked will be an inheritance to you and to your children and always because you have followed the Lord my God completely. Caleb feared the Lord and he trusted him in his heart. All the others that were sent to scout out the land couldn't see themselves as conquerors. They couldn't see themselves as God saw them. They couldn't see as God saw them. And therefore they couldn't walk in obedience to God word, God's word because they let fear set in. Caleb believed in his heart. The Bible says that he believed completely because of it, there was some land that was promised to him during Moses' days. Now Moses was dead at this time, and Caleb was lead, was, and Joshua was lead, leader. But Caleb was able to claim that inheritance based on the fact that he was completely obedient to God. When we choose obedience to God, we too will be able to claim an inheritance for our children and our children's children. Next, we should walk in obedience if for no other reason than the fact that we recognize that it is God that keeps us alive. Hallelujah, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. Many fall by our side, but we find ourselves spared day after day. It is because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Hallelujah. Next, obedience is the key to breakthrough. Hebrews 12 and 3 for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. It unlocks the power to overcome. Sometimes when God gives us direction, 
opposition will come. But when we obey the word of the Lord, if we obey the word of the Lord at all costs, it is going to break something. It is going to open channels. It is going to open blockages. There are times when we feel that we are doing everything right. We are praying. We are tithing. We are doing all that we can to live a holy life. But it seems as though the hosts, the hordes are against us. And they are. It makes you want to try something different. But something on the inside says, no, just hold on a little bit longer. Don't give up yet. This is when we have to be reminded that the Bible says that Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered. Sometimes God will cause us to suffer things just to bring us to a point of obedience, just to drive us to our knees, just to cause us to say, I yield, I yield, I yield. Who was more guiltless? and innocent than Christ was, yet he suffered. So even in our suffering and our challenges, we have to remain obedient to his word and we will see breakthrough. He will deliver us. We have to trust God to carry us through to fight on our behalf. Trusting God means that we will go through some things, but it will bring you into a realm of supernatural blessings if we continue to walk in obedience to his word. There are angels laden with blessings and great rewards, but he is waiting for us to walk in obedience to his word. Obedience builds spiritual momentum. Momentum describes the strength of a moving object. If something is not moving, then there is no momentum. With every step you take, walking in obedience to God, his glory and his presence rest upon you more and more. And the more his glory rests upon you, the more his light will shine in your life. And the more his light shines in your life, the more the enemy has to bow. And the more you will perceive your circumstances differently. Never give up on trusting God and obeying him. We can trust God because he has a track record that proves he can and he will come through. Keep on pushing no matter what it looks like or what it feels like. Even in the smallest act of obedience, you are building spiritual momentum. Obedience makes you unstoppable. Psalms 18 and 29 says, by thee do I run through troops and by my God have I leaped over a wall. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13 says that walking in obedience is our duty. He said, the end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. Also, obedience has its rewards. There are great rewards for obedience. Proverbs 3, 1 through 2, length of days, long life, and peace. You will have peace of God when you are pleasing God. Hallelujah. You'll have peace of mind. Matthew 5, 19, obedience will bring you into greatness. If you want to be great, be obedient to what the word of God says. Matthew 5, 19 says, whosoever therefore shall break one of these commandments and shall teach men so. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Deuteronomy 5.29 says uh, that when we keep the commandments of the Lord always, it will be well with you and with your children forever. 1 John 3.22 says, uh, when you uh, keep his commandments, whatever you ask, you will receive from him. So how do we walk in obedience? We must choose to. Being obedient is a choice. Uh, we have to fill ourselves with the word of God. We have to guard our thought life and displace every ungodly thought with the word of God. We have to trust God and love him with our whole heart and soul and might. When we love and trust God, then obedience will come naturally. We must reject the opinions of man and fear the Lord. <laughs> Excuse me. It is the fear of the Lord that supersedes any supposed fear of man and what he has to say. Psalm 5 and 3 says, O oh Lord, in the morning, O oh Lord, you will hear my voice. In the morning, I will prepare and a, I will prepare a prayer and a sacrifice for you and watch and wait for you to speak to my heart. 
So take it one day at a time. Each day, wake up and purpose in your heart to obey God today and do that each day. We must do a daily self-check, asking the Lord to search us and examine us to expose anything in our hearts that is not like him. In conclusion, obedience is better than sacrifice. We can choose to be obedient to God because he has a track record. He keeps his word. Everything in him is yea and amen. He delivers. He is a promise keeper. He never fails. He controls everything. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is Elohim. He is the creator of your life, the manufacturer of your life. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is our everything, our portion, and our cup. I can go on and on. But those are just some of the stats. Be encouraged, my brothers and my sisters. Make it your duty. Make it your, your, your goal every day to walk in obedience to the word of God, knowing that God will never see you go wrong, knowing that he will make the crooked places straight before you, knowing that any giant that rises up before you, he has already defeated. May the Lord bless you and may he keep you tonight. Hallelujah. And may this word be an encouragement to your soul. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Do you have some more? Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is good. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's just wonderful how God moves. And I trust you all have been receiving your exhortation during the week. And, and it was amazing that the spirit of the Lord was speaking during the exhortation because Minister Wendy uh, texted me and said that it was exactly on point in terms of what God had given her to give us tonight. So God is so good. So yes. saints, we are blessed. We don't realize how blessed we are and how God's speaking to us uh, throughout the week and even in the word and ministry tonight. So that's just Amen. wonderful. Thank you, Sister Wendy. Amen. Don't go anywhere, praise God, because we're going to pray for the people and hallelujah get you to maybe sign off on us and all those good things. Amen. Well, praise Amen. the Lord. Glory to God. Amen.